Hello Chris, hello Randall, Alan. Uh, today is October 21st and it is Science Friday. right now so I'm gonna be cleaning my room while I make this video oh yeah mm. before I get into science Friday I just realized that it is my sister-in-law's birthday today so I'm gonna have to say happy birthday Ashley happy birthday and by the way yes Batteries in my clock are dead. And yes, I do have a periodic table above my bed. So yeah, I need to change these batteries. I do. Okay, today's sci-fi is going to be a weird one. Um, I am going to at least attempt to uh, see how... These particular fields of science are interrelated. Chemistry and physics. And I'm going to do that because uh, I have noticed that all my physics friends have this god complex about physics that makes them think physicists are far superior to any other breed of scientist. I've also noticed my chemistry friends have this god complex about them that tells them that chemists are far superior to any breed of scientist. When I see it, both stances are bullshit. And so, I am going to make this video on why the physicist is no better than the chemist, and the chemist is no better than the physicist. Uh, I could have that apply to any two fields of science, but since I'm very closely integrated with physics and very closely integrated with chemistry no pun intended by the way for you physics and math guys and gals um i am deciding to do it on physics and chemistry so there you have it okay let us start with the obvious hey i like this Nice, weird, weird vibe to the whole light thing E. Um, let's start off with the obvious. Um, atoms are composed of, as all of you may know, positively charged nucleus surrounded about by negatively charged electrons. And through a chemical perspective, this is just uh, atoms. That's all it is. That's our perspective on it. To the physicist standpoint, negatively charged stuff going around a positively charged center. That is electrical potential and it's also also electrical potential energy and by the way I know uh, your uh, intuition says electrical potential and electrical potential energy are the same they're not because physicists are weird and masochist like that Duh. 
<laughs> so yeah, atoms can be viewed from a chemical perspective and a physics perspective. And with that in mind, chemical pro uh, problems can have a high degree of uh, physics calculation integrated into that, into it. Uh, I should probably start doing that. I should. That will make things, strangely enough, a whole lot easier for me. Hmm. So there's that. You know what? This is gonna bug me, so... Here's what I'm, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and say, Let there be light. Ooh! Glary. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to change the settings on this camera now. Eh. Speaking of light, that is another thing that chemists and physicists have in common. Uh, physicists have uh, all these energy uh, calculations for different frequencies and different wavelengths of uh, light in which the chemists utilize to help uh, figure out what a compound is. And when I, when I say that, I'm talking about uh, spectrometers. Uh, astrophysicists have the light spectrometer. If you're even uh, vaguely familiar with astronomy, you know that you know about that whole band of visible light, absorption lines, all that good jazz. The chemist has have a similar thing, only instead of the visible light band, it's UV band and also a different one for the uh, ultraviolet band and a separate one for the x-ray band. Uh, and those absorption patterns are not types of atoms, but rather types of chemical bonds. Like, for instance, in the infrared band, infrared spectrometer, uh, there's a, a peak at uh, around... 3,100 inverse centimeters. That's very broad. Very uh, strong. That denotes an OH group bound to a uh, single bound to a carbon atom. So, a lot of stuff like that. So, thank you, physicists. You're making my life as a chemist easier. Okay, there we go. Yeah, afternoons. I like afternoons for recording on my place. Shiny. Okay, now let's go to chemical reactions. This is basically... Uh, you put two chemicals together and they react and the rea reaction is just motion of electrons. How electrons move. This can be described by uh, chemical potential energy and electromagneticism. Two concepts from physics. And you can do the uh, calculations in a physics regard to get the chemical answer. Or you can do the uh, chemical equations to get the physics answer to, uh, well, pretty much anything that deals with the electromagnetics or energy or what have you, thermodynamics of the system. Uh, 
also, I like to add the concept that physics and chemistry both deal with the physical world. They both depend heavily on observed fact. Though physics does delve a little bit more into the theoretical, but that's based on math that is derived from observations of the physical world. So, I propose that physics and chemistry are very much more similar than any physicist or any chemist would like to readily admit. Also, another thing regarding similarities between the two, in the world of physics, like the world of engineering, let's use the world of engineering, uh, you build a structure, you build a building, let's say, uh, we live in Vegas, the stratosphere, let's use the stratosphere as an example, um, and when they were building that, they had to take into consideration like the physical strain of the uh, structure that would uh, be applied to it by the forces of nature, like wind, sun, the occasional anomalous uh, flooding of the area. Uh, and that requires both the physics of it, of the macro, uh, materials of it and what the uh, molecules would do uh, with the strain on the molecules themselves so that's a combination of the two right there and also on the engineering front there is a uh, uh, da -da, structure that is still in the uh, uh, beta testing stage. That is basically an artificial tree. And the purpose of it is basically taking carbon dioxide from the air and converting it to, well, non-carbon dioxide. I think it actually does, like, perfectly emulate the, uh, uh, initial and final stages of the chemical reaction of a, a tree, in, or, or rather the gaseous states of the, tr uh, what the tree deals with. Absorb carbon dioxide, exhale oxygen. Um, structurally, it has to withstand the elements, wind, heavy rain, sun, all that good stuff. Earthquakes, because there will be a lot of them in the west coast, which tectonic plates and... The, ah. uh, and it also directly deals with chemical reactions, because it, it takes in carbon dioxide, chemically reacts it with other stuff to produce oxygen. So there's the merging of physics and chemistry right there. You need both. Well, I'm pretty exhausted right now and I still need a lot of shit to do. You know, uh, Chris, I will see you on Monday. Randall, I will see you on Tuesday. DFTBA, this is Alan signing out.